Joining us now in studio to talk about Hungary's new constitution, there's Anna Porter, the author of Ghosts of Europe, and we're happy to welcome you back into this studio. Thank you. Just before we start, I want to remind everybody, we're talking about events that started on the 2nd of January, the day after the new constitution took effect. Tens of thousands of protesters into the streets uh, protesting against this new constitution, which, Michael, if you would bring this up, uh, here's some of what has changed in Hungary. The new constitution limits the power of the head of the national bank. It defines marriage as between a man and a woman. It defines life as beginning from conception. It reduces the number of recognized religions, excluding Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism. And it changes the country's name from the Hungarian Republic to Hungary. Okay, what are people protesting against? Not all of that. Um, I mean, I think that on the ground in, uh, in Hungary, um, the things they, that, that affect everyday life are not necessarily that entire package. And what the EU is protesting, and it has now launched a, a suit against Hungary, I don't know whether you noticed it, I think it was today, um, it are, are not necessarily these big issues. Uh, life has become very difficult in, uh, in Hungary for Hungarians and they are protesting that the foreign, the Hungarian currency is gone deep down. They are upset about their pensions having been grabbed by the government, private pensions. So you think the protests are more economically based well, as opposed to the social changes? economically based. I think some of the social changes are certainly, you know, I mean, I, Hungarians, um, the uh, life since conception, that's a toughie. Uh, it's a toughie for Hungarians because they've always had a fairly liberal um, kind of uh, social structure. So who has instigated these changes? The new government. The new government with a two-thirds majority uh, came into power. Uh, it's, it's not just the constitution. You've got to understand it's the constitution and the veritable cascade of new laws and regulations. And you've got to look at, look at the whole thing I mean, if you are interested, you've got to look <laughs> at the whole thing in combination. So it's the, uh, the uh, Fidesz, which is a center-right party, mm -hmm. uh, to, totally different from the Jobbik, who have also been demonstrating, I don't know whether it's you've noticed party. that, a different party, mm -hmm. and they are to the far right, and they are burning, they're the ones burning the EU flag as opposed to Fidesz, which is a center-right party, and they came into power with a two-thirds majority and have ever since then shown a great inclination for authoritarianism. Well, let's talk about how they've done this, because in some respects, you're born in Hungary, but you've lived in Canada for a long time, and obviously you know how difficult it is to change constitutions. We've been at it for a long time in this country, occasionally not very successfully. Not how did they left it alone. <laughs> how did they get such fundamental changes to their constitution in just two years' time? Um, they, uh, they have two-thirds majority, and it gives them the power to change the constitution. Um, in, you know, in, 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 in many countries, you need the agreement of the opposition. In Hungary, you don't. Hmm. They have been able to come up with it now. The new constitution is brand new. It's not a rewritten version of an old constitution. And, uh, and I was asking the uh, Hungarian um, ambassador about it just last week. And he said, well, you know, the constitution that had been in force before um, goes back to the 40s. And it was imported to Hungary from the Soviet, from Union, the Soviet Union, translated yeah. into Hungarian and it then masqueraded as the Constitution of Hungary. So I now... Said, yeah, but they rewrote got a, it quite a lot in 1989, didn't huge they? Huge yeah. rewrites, many amendments, uh, agreed by all parties, hmm. uh, agreed by the country. Hmm. So, but this is from word one till the end. It's a brand new Constitution. Okay. The, the um, European Union, whom you referenced earlier, the International Monetary Fund, the United States, have all expressed objections and sent formal uh, objections yes. to the government of Hungary over these changes. What are they pointing to as their chief concerns? Well, first of all, um, the judiciary. Um, the massive changes to uh, the judiciary, which includes the retirement of judges they at age 62. They helped the retirement age, didn't they? 
62. Yeah. So a whole whack of judges just whole, had to leave. Yes, I, I gave a speech to a bunch of uh, judges and, and lawyers uh, just this past year, and I said, well, can you imagine? Huh. And of course, pretty much all the people in the room were over 62. So, so was this a means of the government of, getting rid of its... Yes, getting rid of people who may disagree with, mm. with it. And, and the government also said, will be setting up an individual advised by the Prime Minister who will have the right to decide which cases will be tried by which judge. Now that is a kind of, that's a really unusual thing. So that's, that's one, of, one of many things uh, the EU doesn't like. Um, the, both the EU and the uh, Monetary Fund are opposed to changes to how the Hungarian bank is governed. Yeah. It's important to have transparency, it's important to know who you're dealing with, and it's important for um, that function to be independent of government. How and about some of the, um, shall we call them patriotic in inverted commas, elements that um, have been included in this latest go-round? There are, how are the neighbors reacting to some of these efforts by Hungary? Do you know what? I haven't been watching the neighbors. My guess mm. is that they won't like it, but they haven't liked very much about what's been going on ever since Fidesz has been elected. Because um, some of it's uh, kind of, I mean, chauvinistic, is it not? Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it, it, there's no question that the uh, Treaty of Trianon, uh, mm. which is really just a side chamber to the Treaty mm. of Versailles, was hugely mm. unfair to Hungary. So, you know, I mean, that's, uh, uh, Hungary did lose um, two-thirds of its territory by that treaty. Hungary was the, the biggest loser of World War I. So a lot of Hungarians got trapped in other countries on mm -hmm. the periphery, and, and many of them have difficulty operating in their own language. I mean, Slovakia, there are actually have been laws preventing Hungarians from operating in their own language, in their own, uh, you know, in the street. In, 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 in. So it's a very, um, it's reaching out to these people. Now, um, giving them the vote is pretty tough because I think that what might happen and what's likely to happen is that the countries surrounding Hungary are going to react negatively, which will affect the, the Hungarians who live there. And, and what about the minorities of other races that live in Hungary? How are they being treated these days? Well, um, I think that the, 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 big, the big issue in the Constitution is the Holocaust and, uh, and, and, and the Jewish reaction to, to that. Uh, both inside Hungary and outside Hungary. If you look at the constitution, the new constitution, it really um, deals with um, what happened to the Jews in Hungary during the Holocaust as equivalent to what happened in Hungary under the communists. Hmm. Um, whereas during the Holocaust years and leading up to the Holocaust years, Hungary was a full ally of, of Germany. Now, this is a this is an, an and as an ally of Germany, hung, it was Hungarians who participated in the rounding up, um, sticking into boxcars and sending their own Jewish citizens off. And you know, many of them were neighbors mm -hmm. and 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 people they had known so this off to the death camps. So mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, it should be discussed and dealt with. I was just going to say, this is a country that still has never, hasn't dealt with the fallout of World War I, hasn't dealt with the fallout of World War II yet. It's, it, it has been dealing with the fallout of World War I, but not World War II. And, mm. and that particular, that's a hot button issue. And, uh, and every time I mention it, either here or in a column, I get a lot of uh, nasty hate mail from Hungarians. Michael, you want to put some of these pictures up here? We've got that shot of, uh, you talked earlier about the flag burning of the uh, European Union. And there it is right now. We're showing a shot of it. Um, you that's know, the Jobbik. Th this that's is the Jobbik party, the far right Jobbik party, not the governing party that's doing that kind of thing. But when you see images like this, uh, do, do you think this has deep, you know, the expression here would be, does this have legs in Hungary? 
Well, they have. The OBIC has uh, now about 20% of the vote. Mm -hmm. um, they are not far behind um, the socialists, the former uh, government. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the socialists are around 23, 24%. So really very close. And, um, and there is a possibility that the Yobik will end up, this is the far right mm -hmm. uh, party, who are quite openly, openly racist in their, in their talk, in their remarks, in their wish to separate Hungary, as you, you saw in the, uh, in the video, um, from the EU and have no interference from the EU. And in fact, uh, their leaders making speeches about how the European Union has brought no good things for Hungarians. What's your so, view on that? I think the European Union has been very good for Hungary. Um, it, you know, I mean, what's ha the, the financial crisis was not created in Hungary. Right. The financial crisis is everywhere. Um, it, to my mind, one of the curious things about, perhaps I shouldn't say this, about <laughs> recent events because it hasn't been much in the news, they haven't been much in the news here, is how much is focused on Hungary at a time when Greece is in a catastrophic situation. Mm -hmm. Italy's had uh, Berlusconi. I mean, it's a lot more fun in many ways than dealing with Mr. Orban, who's, as far as I can tell, is, uh, is morally <laughs> not in the same league. As Berlusconi, but then again, who is? Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of envious, sometimes envious of those Italian uh, journalists who were <laughs> able to cover all the hijinks. But anyway, Italy, a mess. Mm. Spain is a mess. I mean, it's uh, uh, right. Ireland, Iceland, keep going. And yeah, yeah and on and on and on. And uh, the uh, the French uh, have just been downgraded. I mean, mm. it's and all the European papers and the news coverage is Hungary now. Listen, I, I watch it. I'm fascinated by it. Um, but tell are me Canadians this. interested really in what's going on in Hungary? Well, we'll find out from your show. <laughs> but if you look at, you know, take the accent off the economics for a second and put it back on, on uh, you know, democracy. Do you, as you look at these protests, as you look at what's transpired in terms of constitutional change, do you fear that Hungary is taking a backward step in terms of improving its democracy? Yes, I do, I do fear that Hungary is taking a backward step. Um, and, and I've read the Constitution. I've read it more than once. And I've read it in both languages. And, uh, and there's, there's parts of it that I find quite, um, quite scary. And you've alluded to some of that. Um, but the judiciary, independence of the judiciary is terrifying. I, being a member of the media, because I find the Hungarian media loss, which is another issue on which um, the European Commission and the EU has lodged complaints uh, against Hungary. Mm. Um, to my mind, having independent media is critical. Mm. Let me and ask, well, speaking of which, you know, Adam Miknik, who's the uh, yes, Polish dissident uh, from, from the Soviet era, one of your great heroes, a newspaper editor. Um, you know, he's made the point that here we are 20 years after the end of the Soviet Union, and many of these former Eastern Bloc countries seem to be taking retrograde steps. Um, you know, they're supposed to be getting more and more democratic as the years go by, and I guess they, in some respects, is authoritarian too strong a word to use? No. They are moving in that direction. Well, certainly, certainly um, Hungary has moved in that direction. I, I don't see it in, in the Czech Republic, and I don't see it in Poland. How about really, Slovakia at all. Or any of the stands? Slovakia did have. Oh, the stands are not part of the EU. Right. But they certainly have they, moved. All, all of them have moved. We're part of the in lockstep. Soviet Union, that, though. And Belarus. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Ukraine. Russia. Uh, Russia <laughs> is catastrophic. Mm. Now you know. I mean, I should say this now in comparing what's been going. To to be a journalist in Russia is to put your life on the line. Just look at the numbers. Yep. They are absolutely horrific. You can be a journalist in Hungary. Now, chances are that you're not going to find a job unless you are um, you're willing to go along with the current government and say nice things about it. But you're not going to get killed. Mm. So your life is not threatened. So, in, I mean, Hungary is still a civilized country. 
you, chances of, of your getting beaten up uh, by the Hungarian police and uh, buried, are, it's just not going to happen. Hungary doesn't have an equivalent of the FSB, and you're not going to get poisoned. Uh, with radioactive material, if you're uh, if you're saying nasty things about the government, well, that's good to know. You won't you won't necessarily get a job. You may have to move to Montreal, as uh, as one Hungarian journalist has done, and he is teaching um, very successfully at uh, Concordia University. That's Anna Porter, author of Ghosts of Europe, and as always, we're glad you could visit us tonight at TVO. Thank you.